competition is called Daijo, Great Vehicle Mahayana Zen, and this is a truly Buddhist Zen, for it has as its central purpose Kensho Godo, that is, seeing into your essential nature and realizing the way in your daily life. For those able to comprehend the import of the Buddha's own enlightenment experience and with a desire to break through their own illusory view of the universe and experience absolute, undifferentiated reality, the Buddha taught this mode of Zen. Buddhism is essentially a religion of enlightenment. The Buddha after his own supreme awakening spent some fifty years teaching people how they might themselves realize their self-nature. His methods have been transmitted from master to disciple right down to the present day. So it can be said that a Zen which ignores or denies or belittles enlightenment is not true Daijo Buddhist Zen. In the practice of Daijo Zen your aim in the beginning is to awaken to your true nature, but upon enlightenment you realize that Zazen is more than a means to enlightenment. It is the actualization of your true nature. In this type of Zen, which has as its object Satori awakening, it is easy to mistakenly regard Zazen as but a means. A wise teacher, however, will point out from the onset that Zazen is in fact the actualization of the innate Buddha nature and not merely a technique for achieving enlightenment. If Zazen were no more than such a technique, it would follow that after Satori Zazen would be unnecessary. But as Dogen Zenji himself pointed out, precisely the reverse is true. The more deeply you experience Satori, the more you perceive the need for practice. Seijojo Zen, the last of the five types, is the highest vehicle, the culmination and crown of Buddhist Zen. This Zen was practiced by all the Buddhas of the past, namely, Shakyamuni and Amida and is the expression of absolute life, life in its purest form. It is the Zazen which Dogen Zenji chiefly advocated and it involves no struggle for Satori or any other object. We call it Shikan Taza, and of this I shall speak in greater detail in a subsequent lecture. In this highest practice, means and end coalesce. Daijo Zen and Seijojo Zen are in point of fact, complementary. The Rinzai sect placed Daijo uppermost and Seijojo beneath, whereas the Soto sect does the reverse. In Seijojo, when rightly practiced, you sit in the firm conviction that Zazen is the actualization of your undefiled true nature, and at the same time you sit in complete faith that the day will come when, exclaiming, Oh! This is it! you will unmistakably realize this true nature. Therefore you need not self-consciously strive for enlightenment. Today many in the Soto sect hold that since we are all innately Buddhas, Satori is unnecessary. Such an egregious error reduces Shikan Taza, which properly is the highest form of sitting, to nothing more than Bompu Zen, the first of the five types. This completes my account of the five varieties of Zen, but unless I now tell you about the three objectives of Zazen my presentation of these five types, especially the last two, will be incomplete. Dot. The three aims of Zazen. The aims of Zazen are three. Development of the power of concentration, Satori awakening, and actualization of the supreme way in our daily lives. These three form an inseparable unity, but for purposes of discussion I am obliged to deal with them individually. Joriki, the first of these, is the power or strength which arises when the mind has been unified and brought to one-pointedness in Zazen concentration. This is more than the ability to concentrate in the usual sense of the word. It is a dynamic power which, once mobilized, enables us even in the most sudden and unexpected situations to act instantly, without pausing to collect our wits, and in a manner wholly appropriate to the circumstances. Those who have developed Joriki are no longer slaves to their passions. 
more fully in command of both themselves and the circumstances of their lives. Such people are able to move with real freedom and equanimity. The cultivation of certain supranormal powers is also made possible by Joriki, as is the state in which the mind becomes like clear, still water. The first two of the five kinds of Zen I have spoken about depend entirely on Joriki. Now, although the power of Joriki can be endlessly enlarged through regular practice, it will recede and eventually vanish if we neglect Zazen. And while it is true that many extraordinary powers flow from Joriki, nevertheless through it alone we cannot cut the roots of our illusory view of the world. Mere strength of concentration is not enough for the highest types of Zen. Concomitantly there must be Satori awakening. In a little-known document handed down by Master Sakito Kizan, the founder of one of the early Zen sects, the following appears. In our sect, realization of the Buddha nature, and not mere devotion or strength of concentration, is paramount. Quote, the second of these aims is Kensho Godo, seeing into your true nature and at the same time seeing into the ultimate nature of the universe and, all the ten thousand things, in it. It is the sudden realization that, I have been complete and perfect from the very beginning. How wonderful! How miraculous! If it is true Kensho, its substance will always be the same for whoever experiences it, whether that one be the Buddha Shakyamuni, the Buddha Amida, or any one of you gathered in this temple. But this does not mean that we can all experience Kensho to the same degree, for in the clarity, the depth, and the completeness of the experience there are great differences. As an illustration, imagine a person blind from birth who gradually begins to recover his sight. At first he can see very vaguely and darkly and only objects close to him. Then as his sight improves he is able to distinguish things a yard or so away, then objects at ten yards, then at a hundred yards, until finally he can recognize anything up to a thousand yards. At each of these stages the phenomenal world he is seeing is the same, but the differences in the clarity and accuracy of his views of that world are as great as those between snow and charcoal. So it is with the differences in clarity and depth of our experiences of Kensho. The last of the three objectives is Majodo no Tejin the actualization of the Supreme Way throughout our entire being and our daily activities. At this point we do not distinguish the end from the means. Seijojo, which I have spoken of as the fifth and highest of the five types of Zen, corresponds to this stage. When you sit earnestly and egolessly in accordance with the instructions of a competent teacher, with your mind fully conscious yet as free of thought as a pure white sheet of paper is unmarred by a blemish. There is an unfoldment of your intrinsically pure Buddha nature whether you have had Satori or not. But what must be emphasized here is that only with true awakening do you directly apprehend the truth of your Buddha nature and perceive that Seijojo. The purest type of Zen, is no different from that practiced by all Buddhas. The practice of Buddhist Zen should embrace all three of these objectives, for they are interrelated. There is, for instance, an essential connection between Joriki and Kensho. Kensho is the wisdom naturally associated with Joriki, which is the power arising from concentration. Joriki is connected with Kensho in yet another way. Many people may never be able to reach Kensho unless they have first cultivated a certain amount of Joriki. For otherwise they may find themselves too restless, too nervous and uneasy to persevere with their Zazen. Moreover, unless fortified by Joriki, a single experience of Kensho will have no appreciable effect on your life and will fade into a mere memory. For although through the experience of Kensho you have apprehended the underlying unity of the cosmos with your mind's eye, 
Without Joriki you are unable to act with the total force of your being on what your inner vision has revealed to you. Likewise there is an interconnection between Kensho and the third of these aims, Majodo no Tejin. Kensho when manifested in all your actions is Majodo no Tejin. With perfect enlightenment we apprehend that our conception of the world as dual and antithetical is false and upon this realization the world of oneness, of true harmony and peace, is revealed. The Rinzai sect tends to make Satori awakening the final aim of sitting and skims over Joriki and Majodo no Tejin. Thus the need for continued practice after enlightenment is minimized. And Koan study, since it is unsupported by Zazen and scarcely related to daily life, becomes essentially an intellectual game instead of a means by which to amplify and strengthen enlightenment. On the other hand, while the practice advocated in the official quarters of the Soto sect today stresses Majodo no Tejin, in effect it amounts to little more than the accumulation of Joriki, which, as I pointed out earlier, leaks, or recedes and ultimately disappears unless Sazen is carried on regularly. The contention of the Soto sect nowadays that Kensho is unnecessary and that one need do no more than carry on daily activities with the mind of the Buddha is specious. For without Kensho you can never really know what this Buddha mind is. These imbalances in both sects in recent times have, unfortunately, impaired the quality of Zen teaching. This concludes the discussion of the three aims of Zazen. Dot. Individual instruction. Continue to practice the exercise I gave you last time, namely, concentrating on your incoming and outgoing breaths and endeavoring to experience each breath clearly. This lecture will deal with Dokusan which is the time allotted for bringing all problems pertaining to practice before the Roshi in private. This tradition of individual teaching started with the honored Shakyamuni himself and has continued unbroken until today. We know this because one of the great masters of Tendai, Chishadeshi, in his systematization of all the sutras under eight teachings and five periods, lists the secret teaching, which corresponds to Dokusan. Without this individual guidance we cannot say that our practice of Zazen is authentic. Unfortunately, since the Meiji period, nearly a hundred years ago, Dokusan has virtually died out in the Soto sect, continuing only in the Rinzai tradition. If we compare Zazen to a journey on which some start rapidly and then slow down, Others begin slowly and later accelerate their pace. Some find one phase of the journey more hazardous than another, and all carry different burdens of luggage. We can begin to understand why individual guidance in Dokusan cannot be dispensed with. It may be asked why it is necessary to keep Dokusan secret. Since nothing immoral is involved, why can it not be open and in public? First of all, since we are ordinary people, with ego, in the presence of others we are inclined to make ourselves out to be better than we are. We cannot bear our souls and stand naked, as it were. Likewise we hesitate to speak the whole truth for fear of being laughed at. Or if the Roshi scolds us, using harsh language, we become more concerned with the effect of this on others than in listening to him open-mindedly. There is yet another reason for privacy in Dokusan. After your first experience of Kensho you move from Koan to Koan as your understanding deepens. And were others to be present when you demonstrated these Koans, listening to the Master's replies, they might think, oh, so that's the answer. Without fully understanding the import of the Koan, obviously this would hurt their practice. For instead of coming to their own realization and presenting it to the Master, they would remember that this was an acceptable answer but that was not, and thus, to their own detriment, their Kohen practice would degenerate to mere intellection.
For these reasons you should remain silent when asked about a koan which the questioner has not yet passed. Irresponsible talk may lead to other harmful consequences. Rumors may spread that one is savagely beaten in Dokusan. For example, giving Zen an undeservedly bad name. Therefore do not discuss your koans with anybody, not even your best friends or members of your family. It is precisely this violation of the secrecy which formerly surrounded the koan system that has brought about a steady deterioration in Rinzai teaching. What I am about to say does not apply to lay people, who are generally serious in their practice. But in the monasteries, where there are monks who resent the entire training, being there in the first place only to serve the period required to inherit the resident priesthood of a temple, this problem becomes serious. In